Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV. I am Vedant Agarwal. Our top story. Well, the Congress has released its seventh list for Rajasthan and several important names there, including Shanti Dhariwal, who has gotten a ticket from Kota. And this has come after much back and forth and some resistance from the High Command. In fact, the Congress High Command had some issues with Shanti Dhariwal. And after several meetings and consultations, finally, he has gotten a ticket. In fact, what's uh, interesting also is that Chief Minister Gehlot's close confidant, Dharvend Rathod, has been overlooked. He has been denied a ticket. In fact, Minister Zahida Khan has been given a ticket despite some opposition from within the Congress. And moving now to the other pole-bound state of Mizoram, where it's going to be a multi-cornered fight and some trouble for the incumbent Chief Minister Zoram Thanga as well. It's going to be a fight uh, that will have multiple players and perhaps a hung assembly as well. But what are really people's issues? What is in their minds? Ratandeep Chaudhary spoke to some people there in Mizoram. Take a look. Welcome to this cafe conversation on the Mizoram election from the famous The Book Cafe Aizol, one of the landmarks in the city where youngsters come, youth come, they discuss their life, their activities and this time they have been discussing elections and we also would be discussing what Mizoram is looking forward to in this election when people here go out to vote. Um, well, it's an exciting time. Um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, Things have gone smoothly, the campaigning and everything else, I guess. Um, I would say when we were younger, um, things are a lot more um, the hype about it and all of those things might be more. So I would assume that this time around, maybe it's a little bit more quieter. Are your students uh, uh, really discussing what, what is going to happen, what will be the outcome of the elections? Well, yes, um, uh, you know, students in political science they are quite uh, interested in politics which is going on right now the election um, I think they're hoping uh, the political landscape to change this time around because um, initially I mean in the past years the trend has been like we have two um, two terms of a political party ruling and then it changes so but this time there's a new player so uh, new new political parties uh, contesting for their elections as well. So uh, so the outcome is um, anticipated by them a lot. They do have certain expectations in terms of employment, in terms of uh, infrastructure, road, mm -hmm. transport, and IT yeah, IT sector, all these things. Okay, they have many expectations. So rather than talk about a particular uh, political party, I just discuss with them what they're really interested about uh, who would be in power and what would they do. So what they're, they're looking forward to? So what they're looking mainly forward to is like, well, most of them, to be honest, they look towards sports also sometimes, yeah. sports development, right? But what they really need is in terms of um, connectivity, say, uh, internet connectivity. Road. It's very important, especially during the COVID times, right? Yeah. Our roads... Uh, I wouldn't say they're the worst in India, but they're definitely not the best. These people have flagged some of the key issues that the new government, which will come to power in Mizoram, will have to address. And these are the issues which are there in the minds of people as they prepare themselves to vote on November 7. From the book cafe in Aizol with Campusman G.D. Shankar, Ratandeep Chaudhary, NDTV. So, well, Mizoram is going to be a fascinating fight, but let's also look at the larger national impact that these state elections will have. What about the opposition space? Are the gaps widening? Well, it seems so because Akhilesh Yadav yet again has hit out of the Congress party, saying that it's a cunning party, asking people not to vote for either the BJP or the Congress at a political rally in Madhya Pradesh. Listen in. Congress ko bhi vote mat dena. Bahut chalu party hai Congress. सावधान रहोगे कि नहीं रहोगे बंसल जी बेबल ने मैं दुखी थे कांग्रेस ने धोखा दे दिया अरे जब हमें धोखा दे दिया तो तुम कहां के बंसल हुआ
So, well, uh, those splits and cracks widening as far as the opposition space is concerned, many differences yet to be ironed out. But moving now to our other big focus on NDTV, the Nepal earthquake and the aftermath. Well, another earthquake on Sunday struck Nepal and that was a 3.6 magnitude earthquake. But uh, many parts of Nepal are still reeling under the impact of the massive 6.2 magnitude earthquake that hit Nepal last week. In fact, uh, there you can see those visuals of destruction. Rescue operations are the focus right now. My colleague Tanish Punjabi has been reporting from the ground and he's reported from the epicenter, giving, bringing to us stories of destruction, loss and tragedy. Take a look. At a height of over 5,000 feet, these beautiful views hide stories of death and destruction. Jajjar Court, the epicenter of the earthquake that hit Nepal on Friday night. With over 150 lives lost, it is the deadliest quake in the last eight years. In a row, many homes lay in ruins, victims of destructive force. Bhim Bahadur, a local resident, was sleeping when the disaster took place. While his family was able to save themselves, his mother-in-law was killed in the quake. after then 15 minutes, uh, police, our police arrived. They try to rescue. Uh, within 10, 1.5 hours, they try and rescue my, my mother. Some have even lost their homes. Property something a crore ka ho gaya hai inka pura hi loss ho gaya kuch bhi nahi raha ye bhukam jab aaya to unhone isi bed pe sute hue the lete hue the uske baad mein aaya ek hi baar mein pura distract ho gaya not just houses key buildings like schools and government offices have been flattened this is the napi vibhag napi karyalay of jajjar court and you can see that uh, there, there is a lot of uh, a lot of destruction. The complete office has been destroyed. And as we spoke to the locals also, they told us that a lot of uh, uh, official documents have also been damaged. Amidst the chaos that gripped the village, a few stepped forward, taking the lead in extending a helping hand. Our mommy, mama, this is the son of the son. The son of the son of the son of the son of हमने बाहर निकाला और पंप किया उसको माउथ दिया माउथ जैसे ब्रेथ दिया और उसको हमने हॉस्पिटल पहुंचा दिया अभी ठीक है उसके बाद अभी ठीक है अभी ठीक है उसके बाद हम नीचे जाके वो घर पे जाके एक बच्चे को बाहर निकाला उसके बाद हम लोग इधर चोर पे चले गए हां उसके बाद वहां वहां से नीचे के तीन लड़की को बाहर निकाला व्हाइल वी वर रिपोर्टिंग वी वर टोल्ड टू बी केयरफुल एज देयर वाज स्टिल सम पार्ट्स ऑफ वॉल्स दैट वर कोलैप्सिंग द टाउन व्हिच सॉ डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑन फ्राइडे it's now slowly trying to resume its life. With camera person Rajesh Gupta, Tanish Punjabi for NDTV. Sir, I would like to ask that uh, Nepal is an earthquake prone area. So, what preparedness was done uh, uh, earlier before, you know, for the preparation of any such natural disaster? Was there any pre pre preparation beforehand that if any such disaster... Yeah, happened? we have one institution called NDRRMMA. Uh, national Disaster Reduction Risk Management and in different districts also we have another body District Disaster Management Committee and in many centers of different provinces we have some places some spots where we have collected the materials needed for the at the time of crisis of like disasters so we have been preparing for the 
the crisis that uh, can occur any time but still we have to do more okay and sir what do you have to say about uh, the aid received from india india has sent some aid to we are very much grateful and thankful to india and also to china that they have always in the time of crisis supported us cooperated with us and this time also immediately india offered help to us cooperated us and we are very much thankful and grateful to us and also we are discussing after the need assessment we will request what are the things that we need from india okay uh, sir if i would uh, just one last question what all uh, relief work is going on how much compensation is being given to the victims and if you could just tell us about that no nepali rupees 2 lakhs for each family who have been deceased and uh, we are going to now fix the re- rehabilitation and reconstruction plan okay. so for that we are going to do something in a few days but now the first priority is relief we say give the trip tent and there's blankets foods and mattress these are the preliminary requisites so we are doing that our first day we whole heartedly focused on search and rescue search and rescue all the injured were taken to the hospital even to kathmandu uh, capital city hospital now there are not missing in our analysis there are not any missing dead body or not injured body that are missed search and rescue is just uh, completely successfully done and then second phase is relief and we are going the materials giving them giving the materials to the victims through the elected bodies and the second is rehabilitation and reconstruction for which we are going to plan thank you so much okay. sir thank you so much so that was the home minister of nepal speaking to us about uh, the relief operations that have been going on and also uh, the help received from india and ap- apart from that he also spoke about how uh, nepal actually prepared itself earlier and there is still more to do with camera person rajesh gupta tanish punjabi for nd tv so we are joined by uh, the health minister of uh, nepal uh, sir i would just like to know like nepal is an earthquake prone area so what preparedness was done beforehand in terms of health infrastructure yeah we already prepared our um, health system i am also health minister yeah. health secretary is here yes um yesterday uh, we planned um, all over the earthquake area what we have to provide the service we already manage it okay uh what do you have to say about the aid received from india sir uh, after the earthquake aid was received from the body of um our friendly country they want to give us uh, something um for the um, management of earthquake uh, problem so uh, we um first of all we uh, discuss about uh, what we need firstly secondly thirdly then we'll talk uh, with our um, um friendly countries okay. thank you sir thank you so much for speaking to us so that was the health minister of nepal speaking to ndtv about the health infrastructure preparedness with camera person rajesh gupta tanish punjabi for ndtv so the trailer destruction there in nepal we'll take a short break now news continues on the other side but moving now to a shocking story from the silicon city a woman officer working with the karnataka government was murdered at a home in bengaluru on saturday night as per the police the victim pratima serving as a deputy director in the mines and geology department of karnataka was found stabbed to death at her residence the 45 year old was dropped off at her home by the driver and her body was found by her brother she was reportedly murdered around 8:30 pm while her husband and son were away in the shivmogga district and of course now the chief minister has ordered a strict probe as well dynamic lady okay yade idukku endru tarilla okay even it made government ga royalty agi maadsadagli yade right maadadagli adukku it maadtaru ulle hesaru maadidu okay itthis ga the right gil maadidu sir maadidara maadidu maadidu okay adu yara virodha itta sir virodha mele right maadidu sir hosa rules prakara government ga rajadhana yenide adana right maadidu royalty adana ella chanagi it maadidu rebound ga ulle hesaru tagondidu 